Right. What if Issei was betrayed and got sea monster powers? Okay. I felt like doing this, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Alright. Issei woke up in, in a deep cold sweat. He was having odd dreams. And Drake was on, on his arm, you know, because he sacrificed his arm. He literally is very proud of himself because he's done so many things for his friends and he has friends and everything and he's just really really happy happy that uh... he has friends and people that can accept him which was very nice so he was cheerful he walked out of his room all of a sudden his parents call him down he goes down sees his parents and they literally say I'm sorry, Issei Hyodo. Well, Issei now. We don't want you anymore. We're abandoning you. And they're signing the document to, you know, be rid of Issei. And Issei's confused of why. And they said, well, it's not exactly just because you're a pervert. It's more of you're a pervert, you don't make high grades. We don't really think you're going to be any use to society in, in general. And, yeah, we don't really want anything that you do to correlate back to us. So, we're leaving you. Oh, you can enjoy this house, though. We're moving anyway. So, they walk out, already had all their stuff packed and stuff, everything, and they drive away. And Issei does not have a last name anymore. Which, Issei is heartbroken. But he just doesn't show it. He just hides it. Keeps it in a bottle. It's filling up slowly. With this black substance, which is his own emotions. He's bottling up his own rage of this happening and his own sadness. But he just, you know, snaps out of it. And makes himself some food. Eats food. His food. Steps outside of his house, closes the door locks it, keeps the key on him, walk, starts walking to the Co High School. On the way walking there, well, something interesting happens. He sees uh, the Kendo team, and he's about to, you know, like, say hi to them, because he apologized previously in this timeline. He apologized for all the perverted acts. They were pretty cool with him, and then they look at Issei, and yeah. No, they fucking hated his guts. But he didn't understand why. He apologized for all his perverted acts and he hasn't committed any for a good while, actually. It's just, since he's around his two friends, they thought he was still a pervert. By association, now. Even though he snapped out of that phase. He tries to go up to them, but they just don't, don't really look at him. They just walk away. And he says, uh, what did I do wrong exactly? And I said, you're still a pervert. And he said, I'm not. I just hang out with my friends. That's all I'm doing. I don't pervert girls anymore or anything like that. They don't believe him. So one of them goes up to him and says, you're a fucking liar. And, well, she kicks him in the nuts. And punch, they all jump him, thinking that he's lying. And just know they have their, you know, wooden weapons. They're beating the shit out of him. He said could easily body slam them with his, you know, devil powers, but he doesn't do this because he knows it's wrong to use it against people that are weaker than him. And he's just still the kind guy. So he lets them do this. They walk away. Issei gets up. The bottle's still filling up in his mind, well, in his very soul, filling up a little bit, and Issei just shrugs it off, and, you know, just starts walking to school, all beat up and bruised, walks to the front gate, everyone's staring at him with disgust, for no reason, what he assumes, and then his two friends, which he was about to walk up to and actually talk to, 
both said not to get near him them that he's just some freak that they were just using it for a cover nothing more nothing less we just pretend to be your friend that's what they both said and they said oh yeah also the ORC wants to talk to you and we're joining the ORC you've been replaced which I'm I don't know his friend's name in the anime but I'm gonna say that one of their names is Zack. Zack and Cody, okay? If you know the reference, well, eh, good, good for you. So Zack and Cody both walk away. He says, devastated, the bottle in his very soul itself is filling up a little more. Almost overfilling. It's about halfway full. He says, just very distraught. He goes to the class. Everyone in school is staring at him with disgust. And he doesn't know what's their problem. Until he hears whispers and they said, Didn't he try to rape those girls? You know, Koniko, Akino, Rias, and all of them? Scum like him should just die. And Issei did not do such a thing. And he literally openly says this. They don't believe him though. And he is furious. But he goes to class anyway. Because he doesn't want to be tardy or anything. He actually, you know, isn't late or anything. He's pretty much a model student in this what if. He goes all the way up to his classroom, opens the door, everyone stares at him with pure disgust. Some of them look like they're about to vomit from just his presence. Of being there. And the teacher literally just has the face that says, Why do you even exist? And he says this out loud, which he says very shocked and very pissed off about. He just feels very hurt because even the teachers are seeing him like he's garbage. And they don't believe him whenever he says that he didn't do it. Which he does plead his case to them, but all of them ignore him. So Issa goes to sit at his seat. Koniko is right behind his seat, punching him in the back. And Issa, trying not to, you know, hit her, make his case worse, is currently almost failing because... The teacher's continuing to speak. Issei points it out that uh, Koniko's punching him in the back, and then she punches harder. And the teacher just ignores this. His back is currently bleeding. And it feels like her fist is trying to go through his back. Which is very bad and messed up that this would happen to him. He's currently in his mental state. Like, he just zoned out of class completely. Zoned out of the pain. And then he heard a voice saying, You, young one, are going to not like what's going to happen to you. But when you are in the deepest of your hatred, when you feel like you're drowning in your hatred, anger, grief, and your strife and despair... I will be there for you, and so will my two friends. We will be waiting. Then Issei is literally in a cold sweat, and he pop, literally just pops out of it, just snaps out of it. And then he realizes his back is completely bloody now, as bleeding through his actual uniform, which he's really beaten in the back. The bell actually rings. Issei gets up, walks past everyone. Everyone sees that he has cold, a cold demeanor now, which they didn't really think much of it. Issei just opens the door. The teacher is about to say, I, I didn't dismiss you. But then all Issei does in a bit of anger is just flick him off and say, I dismissed myself, you fucker. And just walks out. And Issei literally can't believe what he just did. Neither can any of them. 
Issei walks to the cafeteria. The lunch ladies look at him in little disgust. And they don't give him his food. Which Issei is very pissed about. Because he needs food. He needs the lunch. They don't give him the food. He's waiting in line. They give everyone else the food. They don't give him it at all. And then he says, you forgot mine. And they just look at him with disgust and said, Oh, I'm sorry. We don't feed insects. No, no, no. We don't feed the rats. And then Issei literally just looks at them with pure hatred. Gives out some bloodlust. Which honestly shocked Konako. Just a little. And they said, uh... Okay, I guess we'll give you some because we feel bad for you. And they're like, you know, sweating bullets. They give him some mashed potatoes, a little steak, and one little milk carton. Not really that much, though. Very little. Issa goes to sit down. Koniko was about to approach him, which Issa remembers what she did in the back in the classroom, and all the accusations and the fact that she has not cleared them up, or the fact that she's probably one of the people that set him up for that. So he just, you know, gets up, starts walking away, and, uh, you know, like fucking Konako starts following him, and then Issei just says, fuck off, you goddamn bitch, which Konako is about to punch him. And then Issei literally just looks her in the eyes with the most fragile looking eyes. Like, he's completely disappointed. Koniko actually stops her a little. But then she remembers something that someone instructed her to, her to do. So she still punches him. Right in the gut. And Issei's coughing up blood. Which, he would normally cry, but he's not trying to. He just looks at her with pure hatred. And just punches her in the side of the head. Bashes her against the wall of the cafeteria. In front of everyone, too. And everyone sees this. And they were cheering for Konako when Konako was beating the shit out of Issei, by the way. And when Issei smashed Konako's head against the wall... There was a complete crack in the wall. Like, the wall looked like it was about to shatter. And Koniko wasn't knocked out, but there was blood dripping from her head. And Issei said, don't you ever do this again. And his voice was getting, I can't really do a voice, but his voice was getting a little deeper. It sounded like it was something else, completely different. Something that should not come from a human, a devil, an angel, a fallen angel, any creature. Or at least not one of that size. Feels like it's something that's very huge saying this. And it terror scares everyone. Everyone in the cafeteria just freezes. Issei lets go of Koniko's head, walks off, and literally just says to Koniko, you should probably go you should probably go to the nurse's office. Hands her a handkerchief, which honestly, Gunnika was shocked that he could still show some kindness after what she did. Grab the actual handkerchief very tightly and put it in her pocket. You say just walked up to the roof, started eating. Right when he was at the roof, though, Kibo was there. Issei was eating, really ignoring Kiba. And Kiba asked, Hmm. I think I see some something that really, really should have been in the dumpster by now. Oh, yeah. Issei, why don't you go take the trash out? By trash, I mean yourself. And then... Issei literally just stares at Kiba with the most hateful eyes. And Kiba is a little scared because he's never seen Issei have such hateful eyes or 
such a glare that literally shocked him to his core. And Kiba had a feeling that if they keep on pushing him, he's going to become something terrifying, something that should be feared. But then again, that was only in the back of his mind. The current him wasn't really smart enough. So he starts punching Yusei, bullying him, kicking him in the, the actual guts, beating the shit out of him, and then saying, Rius needs you in the ORC. Just go there, you damn mutt. And then kicks him to the ground. Then kicks all, stomps his face into the ground, shattering it. Shattering the ground a little. And then points out an actual sword from a sword creation. Sword burst. Gets the sword out. And tries to slash it, Issei. Which, it does work. He's doing slashes all around his body. There's numerous slashes. And then leaves Issei. Up there, just bleeding from those slashes. And Issei is, you know, tending to his actual wounds in the nurse's office now, after he woke up, because Kiba beat him to unconsciousness, which he had a strange dream he couldn't remember. Issei went down, down the stairs, headed to the nurse, nurse's office, started bandaging himself, just went into the nurse's office, went to the cabinet, started bandaging himself, because the nurse looked at him with disgust and wouldn't really do anything for him. Even though he was bleeding profusely, he didn't ask where the wounds were from. And Issei was just putting bandages and stuff on himself. Stopping the bleeding momentarily. And then Issei just, you know, was about to walk out, but Akino appeared. Which, when Akino saw Issei, she was oddly smiling. But, you know, Issei didn't know why. So Issei thought maybe she didn't turn on him. As Issei was about to talk, all of a sudden, he got electrocuted. And just so I know, the nurse already left. Issei got electrocuted by Akuna's magic, pushed onto the bed, and consistently electrocuted, and cuffed to the bed. She tortured, tortured him with electrocutions. Scarring most of his skin, except for his face. He, and this went on for hours and hours. Issei begged, begged for her to stop, but she felt pleasure in this. And hearing his screams of anguish, his fear, his pain, his un, unbottled fury. Issei blanked out, but she still didn't stop. She went on for hours and hours until Issei's heartbeat was barely beating, and then she stopped and walked out. And most of Issei's wounds just reopened. Even worse, actually. Issei, you know, got up, got up removed the handcuffs, and, you know, started trying to band rebandage his wounds. They did, they did bandage, but they were still a little bit of blood blood coming out and no one would really care about him no one would really look up on him Issei was about to you know just walk out his school has just ended about to walk out of the actual school and then Rius, Akino, Kiba, Koniko all of them are there in front of the school Issei is about to walk past them and then Rius grabs him by the by the collar, the back of the collar, and starts trying to grab grab him towards the ORC building, but then Issei slaps her hand and says, Get the fuck away from me. Which just you know Rius is shocked. And Issei is very, very pissed off about what happened. And he's in very much hatred. Pure hatred towards Rias right now. And then Rias says, I know you're mad, but I just want to explain why this happened. And Issei wanted to know what, what happened. So Issei said, 
you know what? I would follow you, but I have a bad feeling that if I do, I'm not going to survive. Or you're probably going to try to kill me or something. And I prefer if you guys are going to betray me, betray me to my face. And he gets the most angriest look. The boosted gear comes out. And Drake is already pissed off about what's happening to his host. Even though Drake doesn't like Issei too much. But just enough to barely consider Issei a friend. They don't have too deep a relationship, but it's not too shallow either. Issei just walks off, is about to head home, and then senses powerful signatures of energy in his home, which Issei is thinking, I should probably not open the door, but you know what, I'm curious now. And Drake says, I don't think you should open the door. And then Issei just tells Drake, well, if I don't open the door into my own house and see what's happening, if I try to run anywhere, wouldn't they just track me down? And, yeah, Drake was surprised because he says acting very smart about this. Which, you know, Drake is starting to like him a little bit more. And says, yeah, that's true. So, I guess you should go in. Which, Issei walks up to his door, does a deep breath, opens the door, sees no one there, Walks in the barrier that was set in front of the door. She's all of them there. Issei sees that Asia, Akino, the Le you know Leviathan, the person who's crowned kind of Leviathan, Sonia and Azazel, Sir Zex, all of Rius's barrage that I didn't mention were there. And, yeah, Sonia's barrage was there, too, and so was Sonia. They all looked at him with pure disgust, and Sir Zex said, We're here to get rid of your pieces. You're no longer needed. You've gotten rid of most of the problems that we really couldn't do before, but now you're really nothing. We don't need you. And you're very perverted and disgusting, which Issa says, I'm actually not a pervert. You guys have been loping me in with my two friends. Which, Sir Zex did not like this disrespect because Issei talked out of turn. So, all Sir Zex did was appear, appear in front of Issei, smack the shit out of him, punched him in the gut. Issei was profusely bleeding out of his mouth. And then, Sir Zex didn't stop there, smashed him against, went up, to, went up towards him more. After Issei was backing up, grabbed his head. Dragged him towards where the table was, slammed his head on the table, and just literally walked back to his seat and sat down. Which, everyone else was laughing at this. And Issei was just pure hatred in his eyes. S said, so, you all just think that you can use me, and throw me away when you feel like it. <laughs> Uh, he starts laughing maniacally. They're shocked and kind of creeped out. And then Issa said, You know what? I helped all of you. I helped Rius out of her marriage. And she wants to, you know, betray me? She prob probably left me to die with the fallen angel. I've known about this. But I was just thankful that you resurrected me. And I decided to, you know, forgive you for it. But no, 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 fuck that. You let me die. And Kiba. The Holy Sword Experiment. I helped you through it. I was there by you. I helped you. I gave you information. And... Asya. When you were abducted, what did I do? I fucking saved your bitch ass. And then whenever you need someone to comfort you, I was always there. I lent a helping hand to all of you. And Akino, didn't I tell you to embrace your fallen angel side too? All of this means nothing to any of you? I helped everyone here, and you just want to betray me. 
thinking I'm useless. Then Issei just laughs even harder about this and says, you know what? You can take these goddamn pieces back. He literally gets Drake out, rips into his own chest, removes all the pieces, and th throws them at them. Hit, make sure that he hits Reese in the fucking forehead with three of the pieces and the rest slam against Sir Zex's face. And then he says, you know what? I may die in a, die very soon, but if I ever come back, I'll be the greatest, biggest monster you've ever seen. The strongest. And I will dominate all of your factions. I will mercilessly slaughter all of you. And you will feel my wrath. And his eyes turn blue. And they're very scared because... They've never seen Issei with so much hatred and bloodlust oozing from him. And Koniko, before Issei, you know, is about to pass out, says that it was all Sir Zex's orders to do this, and Rias's orders that she didn't want to do any of this, but Issei could hear it, but just didn't care anymore. Issei about to pass out, but had just enough strength to leave the door and flip them off. Went up to the door, flipped them off, was staggering, closed the door behind him, and started running out, almost tripping every time he started doing a single step forward. He was running, but almost tripped numerous times. And the rest of them that were in the room at the time were thinking that he might be able to live somehow. So they just wanted out and tried to hunt him. They were hunting him. And Issei was running past the actual park that he was originally killed at killed in and he was devastated looked at the park one last time said well this is where I died the first time <sighs> why me just why Drake was talking to him saying that, that was tough. You know you're about to die, though, right, Issei? Issei said, Yeah, I'm definitely going to die. But I want to fulfill my promise somehow. Then Drake said, Hmm. I'm pretty sure you will, partner. I don't know how, but I can sense your resolve. Something deep inside of you saying that you can do this. Then Issei smiled and Drake on the inside was smiling a little bit too because he cheered up his friend what he calls now a friend he didn't understand the feeling before but he was happy that he had a friend now all the way until a light spear goes straight through his heart again just like in the anime light spear goes straight through his heart again and he looks down and he says not again I don't want to die like this and then three more spears, light spears, just went downwards, raining down on him, through his knees, through his arms, through his neck. And there was two in his chest already. And he said, Lily was still standing up, walked up towards the fountain, looked at himself in the mirror and said, There's someone who said that they're going to be the world's greatest monster and get revenge I look quite pathetic he falls down into the into the fountain but then before he falls he sees the person it's a reflection who had just killed him and it was Azazel someone he thought was a brother to him and Issei was just humongously pissed angry not just at himself for being near people that he figured were friends but just the world in general devils angels fallen angels humans everyone was just locked in with their own greed their own desires using others he just had enough when he fell into the fountain all of a sudden there was an orb that was at the bottom of the fountain and his body was being dragged all the way in 
which odded out Azazel when he looked back at the body, because the body was gone. There was this orb that, going back to Issei's point of view, the orb was at the bottom of the fountain. Issei's blood dripped down onto the orb. And then the orb spoke and said, You finally awakened us. And three voices in unison. And they said, We have heard your desires. We have seen your memories. And we have decided we will make you the ultimate monster. The thing you very much desire at this moment for your revenge. For everything that you could ever have wanted before. Everything that was stolen from you, you could take it back. You could take the world by storm if you want. You can submerge the world in the hatred that you had to go through. You can make it drowned. And then you can hear maniacal laughing laughs from the orb. The orb opens up and turns into a portal, which Issei, who's already passed on, is dragged into. And then all of a sudden, Issei just wakes up in a dark, pitch black room. And he sees nothing in the room. Drake is still in his arm, and Drake is confused about what happened. They're both confused, and all of a sudden the voice says, We are going to train you. There are three trials, are three trials that you must fight through. Each one will be ha worse, hard, but it'll get harder when you go on. You probably wish that you were dead, but in this in this reality, this realm of ours, even if you die, you'll just come back to life consistently over and over. And time is irrelevant. Over millions of years out here, it could only be five seconds out there. So, do you want our power, or do you want to just pass on? We could just let you pass on and go out of this dimension and die. Or, do you want to be the strongest? Do you want your revenge? Do you crave it with all your soul, with all your heart? And then Issei says, I want my revenge. I want to take back everything that was stolen from me. And teach them that I, Issei, am not one to be trifled with. And then, there was a huge laugh echoing. And... The laugh said, you must go through my trial then. We are the three sea monsters. We are the three who have fought against gods. They had to seal us by teaming up all together. We are the true monsters. You may call yourself a monster, but you'll just be a false until we train you. Perf to perfection. All three of those laughs start echoing. And all of a sudden, Issei sees that the entire pitch black room is filled with water. The skies are normal. Issei submerged in water. And he can still breathe in the water, though. Which is quite odd. Issei looked up in the skies through the water and saw that there was lightning storms everywhere, fogs, fog all around the water, all on top of the water. He could barely see through the water, he could only see upwards, and he saw that everything was dark, the water was turning darker and darker. Then he saw a giant figure that was in the water. It, it looked like a giant serpent. It was so terrifying, it had him shaking. And then it was right in front of his face, screaming and saying, If you want my power, you need to show me your will. If you don't show me your will, that your will is stronger than me, then I'll just rip you to shreds and you'll keep on coming back here. So, let us begin. And this... 
is where I'm going to end. What if Issei was betrayed and got sea monster powers? Okay. So, this is the what if that I just decided to go ahead and try to do. Alright. Now, I hope that everyone...